Okay. okay, so now I want to introduce Stephanie Weir. Steph is the speechy, speech pathologist. She's used keyword sign and before that Makaton, so that says something about how old she's been doing it in her work supporting adults and children with communication disability over 15 years. Uh, Steph's the Victorian representative to the Agoski National Executive and the Australian representative to the International ISAC Council. For people who don't know, ISAC is the International Society of Augmentative and Alternative Communication. So it's the international body that supports all forms of um, communication that support people with little or no speech. <clears throat> and Agoski is the Australian organisation that supports the use of AAC. Steph's currently completing her PhD in children's rights and AAC and doing a lot of signing with her six month old. Okay, Steph, over to you. Hi everyone. Um, so as Libby said, today I'm going to talk just a little bit about using keyword signing while you're reading a book. Um, I've been doing this a lot lately with my six month old baby. Um, so I just thought I'd share with you a little bit about what we've been doing. Um, I would like for this to be as interactive as possible. Um, you know, that's the the purpose of introducing keyword signing, particularly with little ones. And um, so I will be asking for contributions as we go along. Believe me, I know this book very well and I can um, certainly sign to it. In fact, my um, my six month old at the moment when I bring it out to practice um, after a week of uh, doing it a lot, she's starting to close the book <laughs> when, I, when I bring it out, which, you know, how clever is that? But still, um, we, we've certainly been doing it a lot in this house this week. So I'll certainly be looking for other people to make contributions about what you think um, the keywords might be as we're going through and what signs you think um, would be ideal to be talking about when we go through each page. I'll just um, share my screen, bear with me. Okay, is that working? Can you see my screen? Yes. <coughs> yes. Okay, so you can see the PowerPoint. Yep. Okay, because it's not it's not showing up for me, but that's fine as long as everybody else can see it. Um, so yeah, I was hoping that we would have a um, a chat function for this activity, but um, it doesn't seem to be working. So I'll just rely on people to feel confident um, speaking up and, and making contributions. Um, what do we think, Libby? We've got how many people? We've got 50 people in the room. So um, shall we just trust people to unmute and contribute themselves? Yeah, put up okay. your hand if you want to ask something or make a comment. Um, and we'll see that and, and invite you to speak. Yeah, sounds good. Um, okay, so I just thought I'd start by talking a little bit about um, interactive book reading or um, we also call it joint book reading or shared book reading. Um, it's a method that we use to promote language and literacy skills in, uh, in young children. So the main aspect that distinguishes interactive book reading from um, other reading methods is that the roles of reader and listener are interchanged between um, children and adults during the reading. So our goal with using an interactive method around a book is, is to spark an interaction. You know, we're not just... Um, requiring a child to be a passive recipient of the story. We're looking to build their language. <coughs> oh, excuse me. You know, and we're just using a book as the um, the context or the object around which we're doing that. So we want to open up a dialogue with a child as much as possible um, rather than just reading a story to them. Um, and to do that, we need to use some strategies to keep a child engaged with the book. So some of the strategies that we can use that I've popped on the slide here, are that as much as possible, we want to facilitate some turn taking with the child. 
Um, and when we're thinking about encouraging a child to take turns, um, we can pause and wait. Pausing and waiting is always going to be one of your primary strategies to uh, give a child a chance to process and respond to something that you've said or give them the cue that maybe it's their uh, turn to take a, a turn in the interaction. Um, we want to make comments as much as possible, both about what's happening in the story and what you can see on the page as well. So making lots of comments can model vocabulary, um, grammatical structures, and can also model different purposes for communication, which I think um, anyone who was in Nicola's presentation this morning would have heard a lot about. Um, things like making an observation, sharing information, sharing a joke, you know, things that can have absolutely nothing to do with the story, um, but it's just, you know, communication that's happening between the two of you. Um, we want to use repetition as much as possible. So repeating key vocab um, throughout the story, even if it's not in the text. Um, so that the child hears it multiple times and has lots of opportunity to make meaning of what you've said, or in this case, what you've signed, um, gives a child a lot of a lot of models of um, of the language that you're introducing to them. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, we want to ask, if you are going to ask questions, we want to make sure that they're open-ended questions um, and that you're asking them as a really active listener. So remember that this isn't a time to be testing a child's language skills and, you know, uh, asking them, you know, maybe something like, oh, what colour is it? when you know, I know what colour it is. And, and again, Nicola was talking about this really beautifully this morning, which I think um, dovetails really nicely with um, the point that I want to make here. Um, you know, there's no point asking a child something that you already know. What, what we really want to know, and we want to show respect for the child as well, we want to know what can you see? What do you think? Um, you know, let me a little bit more into your world because that's the purpose of language and that's the purpose of communication. Um, so yeah, when you do ask questions, making sure we're op uh, asking open-ended questions rather than closed questions, just require a yes or a no or a one-word response and then really shut down the interaction. Um, so overall, making comments and questions should encourage a child to talk in more detail or communicate in more detail. It might not be through talking, it might be through signing, it might be through gesture, it might be through, um, you know, looking. Um, if they're if they're not using this feature, and that's why we're introducing sign. Um, so we're really looking to just use all of these strategies to keep the child engaged with the book, um, which just reading a story on its own might not do. Um, and lastly, for those children who, when they are engaging with the book, we want to think about expanding on the answers and comments that they're providing. So if a child's providing, um, you know, a one word answer, like we're, we're talking about where spots, they might say doggy um, or they might sign doggy. Um, so you might respond by expanding that into a short phrase, something like, yes, that's a doggy. His name is Spot. Spot's a cheeky doggy, um, you know, or something like that. Uh, and for little ones who aren't talking yet, we might just be modelling simpler comments. So we might be modelling um, single words or single signs. We might even be expanding on their gestures or just responding to their interest. So lots of strategies that you can use in addition to your signing to keep a child uh, engaged around a book. Um, okay, and then I just wanted to touch a little bit here on um, you know what we're doing when we're choosing vocabulary around a book. Um, obviously, we're thinking about using our gesture and the um, the interactive vocab as much as possible. Um, but if you're thinking about choosing some additional vocabulary that you might want to model as you're going through the book. Um, for the most part, you're going to be talking about what's on the page. So, you know, you are going to be um, guided by that. But then there are also, you know, other principles that we think about. And anybody who's done a keyword sign workshop or if you're here because you're a keyword sign presenter, you'll be very familiar with these principles. We always think about... Um, First and foremost, things that are motivating to the individual, because that's the crux of um, communication, is having a reason to communicate. So communicating about something that's motivating is going to be a really important thing to think about. Thinking about vocabulary that the child will have a frequent opportunity to use if it's something that, that enters their vocabulary. 
that allows them to communicate using a range of language functions, which we've already talked about, um, and thinking about a range of vocabulary types. So verbs or action words, and then describing words as well, um, like texture, size. Um, I just put emotion and behaviour there for things like, oh, you know, that dog is naughty or, you know, that monkey is cheeky and, and things like that. Um, essentially, we want to be thinking about not just offering nouns or names for things which don't really give a lot of opportunity for interactive communication if the child starts using those words uh, or those signs rather. Um, and then we also want to be thinking about using uh, that vocabulary that the child might be able to use with different communication partners. So essentially we're looking at vocabulary that a child can use across a lot of different contexts. And again, we come back to that concept of um, interaction. What can the child use to interact with others? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we're going to be putting all of that into practice um, by reading through Where's Spot together and thinking about some signs that we might use as we go. So as I said, in the spirit of interactive book reading, I'll need you to help me make this as interactive as possible. Um, so without the chat, we'll just ask people to speak up or maybe raise your hand and um, Libby or someone else might invite you to contribute. So as we go through, we're going to be, or well, I'm going to be asking you to identify the keywords in the text. Think about um, some extra comments that you can make about what's happening in the pictures. And then we'll be thinking about the signs that you could be using. Um, firstly, we'll be thinking about, obviously, as I said, natural gesture and the interactive vocabulary. But then we can talk about um, additional signs or fringe vocabulary that you might need to look up as well. Um, and I've done my best to prepare for you know most things that might come up. So hopefully we won't have to go to the sign bank, but we'll see how we go. Um, and remember that this is a, a lift the flat book as well. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, you know, the interaction that we're actually going to be doing with the book. So something like, um, you know, oh, let's have a look, let's lift it up or something like that. That can also be, um, interaction that we can have around the book because the book is, is an object as well. So for the cover, um, to introduce, you know, the activity or talk about the activity that we're going to do. Um, how might we start? How would we introduce this to a child? Any thoughts? Okay, now I've got to find who's got there. Jennifer, you've got your hand up. Um, could you say like this book is called or the name of this book is? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You might say we're going to read a book today and it's called Where's Spot? Um, now I'll just start out by saying often when I do this as well, I, I just model dog um, for Spot uh, rather than the first letter of his name. I just thought I'd stick with that today so that I don't have to keep moving the, um, the camera up and down. So yeah, so we might start that, uh, start off with that. The book is called Where's Spot? Um, we might even say something like, and it's written by Eric Hill. Um, and I'll just make a disclaimer here actually before I start. Two things. Firstly, uh, because we were just having the conversation about Auslan and uh, regional variation, um, I'm using the southern signs. I'm in Melbourne. So for um, anybody who's following along from other places in the country, um, you might need to, if, if you're thinking about using this activity, um, you might need to go off and look up um, and make sure all of the signs are appropriate to where you are. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry, just to add to that, that's particularly for people in New South Wales and Queensland who'd be using northern signs. Not every sign is different for people who are fairly new to keyword sign, um, but some are in particular colours, uh, mm. but there are others that do vary between southern and northern. And Joanne's got her hand up. Um, just a quick question. Um, the first time you might say, you know, where's Spot, do you spell the full name or would you only ever always just use the first letter? Um, it's a good question. I mean, and it's one that I might, um, after I answer, throw the Libby and make sure that, uh, that she agrees. 
Um, I would probably just use the first letter of his name because that's usually the naming convention that we use in keyword sign. Um, what would you say, Libby? Yeah, I'd probably agree. You know, finger spelling's not a big part of keyword sign um, as opposed to Auslan, if you're for any people who were in that previous session. Um, I think you want to keep it as simple and as visually obvious as possible. And so your choice is going to depend a lot on the age and language level of the person that you're reading with. Um, you might just do dog because Spot is a dog. Yeah, yeah. So, again, there's a number of things to consider always. And, Jennifer, you've got your hand up. Something more to say? Or is it still up from the last time? I thought I put it down. Sorry. No, that's okay. That's fine. I'll just kick in while I've got the floor. Um, the other thing I might say in that front cover is, oh, it looks like he's looking for spot. So yeah. making a comment. Yeah, absolutely. And and I would agree. Um, as I said, usually when I'm signing this, I'll sign dog rather than um, rather than spot. And in my house, we have two dogs, so that gives me something to to jump off on as well. Um, can I can I add something? Yep, absolutely. Um, so typically, you when you first introduce them, you'd fingerspell their for the whole name. Um, but then, could you then once you're reading, you know, say spot, you just uh, assign S and then the and then dog, depending uh, on if there were more than one dogs in the story. So what so what we were saying was that typically you would only sign the first letter of the name because that's typically what we do in keyword sign. <laughs> oh, excuse me, as opposed to um, in Auslan or in the deaf community, they do spell out names. So even the first time when we're just introducing the book, I'd probably just say where's spot or where's dog. I'd, I'd just choose one and I'd go with one or the other. I wouldn't um, move between the two um, because then it sort of becomes like we're doing simultaneous translation, um, you know, which is uh, the same principle when you're using two spoken languages. If you say something in one language and then you say it again in the other language, you're not giving the child um, time to process what you've said because, you know, you've said it twice and you've given two different different um two different languages uh, that they need to process so you either say it in one or the other so I would I would pick one if you're going to start the book um if you're going to introduce the book with the first letter of his name then stick with that throughout the book if you're going to use dog then you stick with that throughout the book does that answer your question yep I think I was just kind of mixing it with Auslan a little bit so that's good to know yeah, good. And, um, you know, there is a little bit of fluidity here in terms of what you choose. There's not necessarily hard and fast rules. I think it does come down to what makes the most sense, as Libby said, for, um, you know, the child and the appropriateness of the language that you're modelling. But that's just probably what I would do. Um, the other disclaimer that I wanted to make as well was... Um, <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm left-handed um, in, ter in terms of my dominant hand. I lead with my left hand for all my signing. You may have noticed I did it, um, I switched over for the vowels, and that's just because if I do them on my right hand, I don't have enough fingers. So I do switch over for the vowels, just in case um, Libby points that out to me later, that I, uh, I made an error. Um, it's, it's a deliberate one. So just to, yeah, just to clarify that I know I'm not doing the vowels correctly. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I think for comments on the front cover, we might say something like that. So this is actually Spot's mum. So we might say something like that. Oh, Spot's mum is looking in a box. And then again, depending on the language skills of the child or what um, level we might be pitching our language at, we might we might um, prompt the child by um, by asking a question. We might say something like, you know, what do you think she's looking for? Um, and I did say earlier, you know, thinking about making comments and not too many questions, but I think that's an appropriate question because we're, um, you know, prompting the child to, to, to think uh, beyond the book, you know, to infer about something that's happening on the page that's not directly represented. Um, okay, let's move on to the first page. So the text here is naughty spot. It's dinner time. Where can he be? So what do we think the key words might be in that text when we're thinking about not signing every word, even though it's only a small amount of text?
Jennifer, no, hand up, hand down. Danielle? Yeah, um, I was thinking maybe naughty, dinner um, and where? Yeah, I think that's probably what I would do as well. Even for that first one, um, you know, we could sign spot as well, but I don't think it's necessary. I think we would probably do naughty spot. It's dinner time. Where can he be? And then as you can see there, um, you know, picking out the keywords and all of them are already in the interactive vocabulary. We don't have to go looking for, um, for extra fringe vocab uh, to get through that text. Um, okay, what else might we say about what's happening on the page in terms of the picture? Uh, Jennifer, you've got your hand up, I think. Uh, it seems to be when I put it down, it goes up, and when I put it up, it goes down. Okay, you got a back to front hand. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Joanne? You might say something. Uh, Mum has eaten. Um, yeah. Spot hasn't yet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was thinking that as well. So something like, oh, look, Spot's mum has eaten her food, but Spot hasn't eaten his food yet. Um, I was also thinking that, uh, again, in my house, we have two dogs. So I might say something like, oh, look, Spot and his mum have food bowls. Your dogs have bowls too. Um, again, you know, thinking about extending the child's language beyond the book, we're using the book as just the jumping off point for an interaction. Um, the other thing I was thinking that we could say about this is, you know, she said, um, where can he be? So we might, again, be thinking about what's appropriate to the child's language level, but for maybe a slightly older child, you might be asking a question like, what do you think Spot's mum is doing? She's walking. Where is she going? Um, or you could even do go in that one as well. Where is she going? And then if you're able to have an interaction with the child around, um, you know, maybe she's going to look for Spot, then you might say something about like, let's help her. Let's help her look for Spot. Let's turn the page and see where he is. Um, and, and the reason I was thinking about that as well is because sometimes, uh, you know, it, this is a, a fairly um, low-level book in terms of the language. It's fairly simple. Um, but sometimes you might be doing a book activity with multiple children. So, um, you know, you might have a very young child and you might have an older sibling who's in the room as well. And so you're thinking about how you can pitch your language to uh, to different levels or if you're doing it you know because you're here and you work in a childcare centre you'll be thinking about differentiating um, the comments that you're making to keep um, children at you know at different language levels engaged so we might be thinking about things uh, comments as simple as oh look it's a doggy um, or we might be going you know up a few steps to saying something like what do you think she's looking for? Or what do you think she's looking for? Or where is she going? Um, so lots of different things that we could say about a relatively simple picture. Okay, we'll turn over to the next page. So what do we think here about the text to start with? What are the keywords in the text? Uh, Danielle, I see your hands up. Is that still up or something to say? Uh, I thought I'd put my hand down as well, but um, I, I guess we might say behind and door as the, the keywords. Yeah, yeah, I think so as well. So you might say, is he behind the door? Or depending on how quickly you're speaking as well, you might even just say behind. You know, is he behind the door? Um, because always remembering as well that we don't want the signing to interrupt the communication. Um, you know, we don't want to, if, if, if you only know one sign or if you're just, um, you know, getting started with your signing and you're not feeling as confident, then just use one sign. Um, because we don't want to be concentrating so much on our signing that we're interrupting the interaction. So, yeah, I, I think we could do that. We could either do behind the door or we could just do behind the door. 
Um, what might we say next? You know, what else could we say about um, about this picture? Joanne? Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so so good remembering that it's a lift the flat book. So we might say something like, oh, I don't know if he's there. Let's have a look. Let's open the door. Uh, and then if we open the door, oh, what would we say here? So think about the picture, but also extra comments or questions that we might make beyond the picture. Kathy? Um, I was thinking, who's that? Mm, yep, absolutely. You could say, oh, who is that? And Joanne? Is that a stuck hand? <laughs> I think you could also say something like, oh, that's not Spot. Yeah, that's not Spot. Marion, did you have something to say as well? I was going to say, it's a bear. It's a bear, absolutely. That's a bear. Um, and yeah, to say say more about the picture as well, we might say that's a bear. Oh, and look, he's eating honey. Um, and one thing I was saying this week to my daughter was, um, and he's not using a spoon to eat his honey. Mm. His paws must be very sticky. Uh, you know, so thinking about your descriptive language as well, you know, what um, describing words, texture, all those kind of things that I can throw in. Um, what might be something else that we describe about the bear? Kathy, something to say? <laughs> I've fallen into the hands up, hands down. <laughs> um, <laughs> diligently turning it off. I'm thinking, is he like, is he standing on one leg? Could we Do talk about? That? Yeah, I think he has his legs crossed, ah. but it is kind of hard to see. But yeah, you could, we could say something about that. Um, He's also very big and very brown. Very yeah. nice. That's a big brown bear. Absolutely. Um, Another another thing that I've been thinking about as well is something like, because there's a lot of animals in this house, so I've been thinking, you know, how did a bear get in the house? Um, yeah, or something like that. You know, again, thinking about the, the level of language that's appropriate to the child, so that might be a, a question for a slightly older child. But you can see even with a fairly simple picture, there's a lot that we can say and a lot that we can sign to keep a child engaged in what's happening. All right, I'll move on to the next page. Uh, and Libby, I can't see a clock, so maybe, well, except for the one on the page. It's <laughs> under 10 minutes, Steph. Yeah, great. I was going to say, just give me a heads up when we're sort of getting towards the end of time. Um, okay, so what might the keywords be in the text on this page? Jennifer. Uh, inside and clock? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So we might sign, is he inside the clock? Um, and again, you know, both uh, signs from the interactive vocab there. Um, I think, I actually think clock might be slightly different to time, which we use in the interactive vocab. But what do you think, Liv? Could we interchange clock and time? Like we interchange oh, no. Yeah, again, I'd be thinking about the language level of the child that you're reading this with. You know, mm -hmm. how simple do you want to make it? Or as um, a child's language uh, is developing, then you might be thinking, okay, I want to model um, new vocabulary that they don't know that's there, that they can make sense of because there's a picture as well. So it's, I think always it's that kind of decision making of what level am I pitching any of my language at and how much am I wanting to provide just that extra level of, of modelling and stimulation of new words and signs. 
Yeah, always thinking about the um, the zone of proximal development, right? The next step up, um, and yeah, and like you say, it can be fairly fluid as well. Um, you know, probably just when you uh, have gotten used to reading a book a hundred times and modelling the same language, um, you know, the child will start coming out with more, and you'll and you'll think about um, pitching it a level higher. Um, so yes, yeah, so we might sign something like that. Is he inside the clock or clock if we're doing time? Um, and then as you know, we did on the last page, might say something like, hmm, I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's open up the door of the clock. And then what might we say now? Danielle. Um, maybe something, oh no, that's not spot, it's a snake. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so yeah, we're thinking about um sorry, oh sorry, I interrupted you there. What was the second part of what you said? Oh, oh good, interrupt went fast too. Um that's a long snake. Yeah, that's a long snake, absolutely. Um, you know, and I talked at the beginning about using repetition as much as possible, so absolutely we might say something really similar to what we said on the previous page, um, thinking about, again, saying something like, oh, no, that's not Spot, that's a snake. That's a very long snake. Um, what's another descriptive comment we could make about the snake? Jennifer, is that a real hand up? No. Okay. <laughs> but we could say something like, you know, what do you think he's doing inside the clock? Yeah, absolutely. What do you think a snake is doing inside the clock? Um, or how did he get inside the clock? Um, and then if we wanted to talk about colours, we could do that as well. He's a yellow snake with green spots um, or diamonds or, you know, whatever they are, uh, or something like that. <coughs> and, um, and I don't actually have these signs in my vocabulary, but we might talk about something like, oh, he has scales or, you know, um, a snake slithers or something like that as well. Um, okay, what about the next page? What do we think the keywords are on this one? In the text, sorry. Keywords in the text to start. Just piano. Yep, yep, piano. And if we're thinking about, um, you know, we've done prepositions on, on the other pages as well, so we might do in as well. And the other thing I have been thinking about is, again, thinking about repetition. Um, so when we get to a new page, we might, um, because it's a question here, so we might sort of state the, the lead into the question, which was, where's spot? Um, and then, yeah, and now we're on this page. Is he in the piano? Um, and then again, thinking about our repetition, I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's open the piano. What might we say now? Marion. Could we say that's not spot? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, thinking about our repetition again. That's not spot. Um, we might say, that's a big hippopotamus. And what else might we say? Danielle? Hand up. Um, oh, look, a little bird. A little bird on the hippopotamus. Yeah, oh, look, it's a little bird. There's a little bird on his head. Absolutely. Um, and the bird is saying, no, Spot's not here. Um, and then again, something else I was thinking about in terms of um, pitching it for a slightly older child, we might say something like, oh, that's a very 
big piano, if it can fit a hippopotamus inside, or how do you think a hippopotamus got inside the piano? Um, yeah, or again, depending on the language level of the child, we might then um, spring off spring off of that conversation into something else. Have you seen a hippopotamus before? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Where did you see a hippopotamus? So, you know, questions like that. Um, a couple more minutes. Okay, great, thanks. Um, you know, or, or thinking about comments. I've never seen a hippopotamus in the wild or something like that. Um, okay, so I'll keep moving quickly. Um, so what about the text here? What would we say? I think you might go with under. Yep. You know, this is a lovely book for prepositions, really, isn't it, for all those location words? Absolutely. So I might say where's spot? Is he under the stairs? I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's open the door. Um, who would say, oh, no, there's a lion under the stairs. Uh, and then what I was thinking here to think about our describing words is we might say something like, oh, that's a bit scary. You better run fast, Spots Mum. You better go to a different room. Um, or something like that. <laughs> All right, I'll keep moving through. One thing I just wanted to say about this page is we talked um, in the last section, uh, you know, a lot about using um, using our, our words visually and thinking about how they visually make sense. So we've done a lot of, you know, opening the door, opening the book. But for this wardrobe, which has two doors, we might do something like that. You know, we better open the wardrobe and see if he's inside. Um, and here we might say, oh, no, that's not Spot. That's a cheeky monkey. And he's eating a banana. Where are the clothes in this wardrobe? Something like that. All right, I'll keep moving because we're almost at a limit. No, I'm sorry. I think we're out of time and I don't think we've got to finish the book. I think you've made um, the important thing is not the details in the book, really. It's the principles that you'd be thinking about, I guess. And I just uh, mentioned that later in the day we've got Harmony Turnbull who's doing a session on how you might plan for reading a book or doing an activity, playing a game, that kind of thing, because you could see in that Steph was using quite a bit of fringe vocab. Again, thinking, you know, you need to think about who you're reading the book with, how many words you want to use. Um, but thank you, Steph, that was great. And I think you've shown us, okay, and there's some additional vocab, <laughs> you've shown us how rich a book reading experience can be and really that a book, uh, reading a book, is so much more than just reading the words that are on the page. There's so many opportunities for conversation, um, for chat, and really I think commenting is the most important thing we do in a situation like that and throughout the day. I think commenting gives us an opportunity to bring in a lot of rich language. You know, if we ask questions or tell someone to do something, largely we're using nouns and verbs. If we make a comment more often, we're going to use some describing words, some adjectives. That gives uh, that means that we're using much richer language and we're modelling a, a rich language environment. And you can do that um, at a fairly simple language level. And Marion, I see you've got your hand up. Last thing to say, go. I uh, my hand is accidentally up. I am actually applauding. <laughs> so um, thank you. That was a really, really lovely session. And I, I really um, enjoyed the reminders about interactive reading and the creative ways to use signs. So thank you. Yeah. Me too. And again, you know, with all of these things, really, the main thing is to make it interactive and fun and a shared communication experience. All right. So thanks to everybody that joined us. Thanks particularly to Steph for delivering this. Time for us to have a break, go to the toilet, thank goodness, um, and come back. Oh, you can uh, join the link if you've got that at your fingertips to go into a break room in a in Toucan. 
um, or just go and get a nice cup of tea and have a little breather and do come back at 11.45 for the uh, conversation about lived experience. Thank you all.